This week I asked you guys to send me some of your games you're working on at the moment so I can give you some feedback. And the first thing I have to say is I'm so extremely proud to have a community like this. There seem to be so many super talented and creative people watching my videos, it's absolutely insane. Thanks a lot for all of the games you sent me. Unfortunately, I got a lot of games, which means I won't be play able to play all of them. It's really strange, as my community becomes bigger and bigger, I almost feel more and more disconnected from you. And back in the days when I had under 1000 subscribers, it was completely possible for me to answer every single YouTube comment and to at the very least check out all of your games. Now that is not possible anymore, which makes me kind of sad. <sighs> I hope you understand. One thing I really want to stress is please finish your game, regardless of what I say about your game. For me personally, if my feedback discourages you in a way that stops you from finishing your game, for me that would be the worst case scenario. At the same time, I want to give you some honest and hopefully helpful feedback. So that's a little bit of a dilemma, you know, I just, I don't want to be like, oh yeah, great game, keep doing what you're doing. That's not very, very useful for you. But then discouraging you too much is also not very useful for you, even if it's honest feedback. So I'm trying to find the balance there. Don't take anything I say all that serious. I'm just a random guy from the internet. I don't necessarily know more than you do. The whole purpose of this is to keep improving our game development skills as a community. And that's what we shall do. Here we have the Grand Delusion. I've already talked to the creator of the game. He doesn't really know what will make this game stand out. He doesn't really know what the vision for this game is going to be. So perhaps we can figure that out. The core mechanic of this game is that you have these balls. And you basically have to pick your ammunition back up again. You throw these balls and then you have to pick them back up. And what are all of these balls that are flying around? It's a cool effect, but if they don't have any gameplay purpose, then perhaps they are a bit too distracting. Oh, here we even have a little bit of decoration. I, I feel like white in this color scheme is a color that stands out quite a lot. So I'd really try to think about which color fulfills which purpose, especially for those colors who pop out a lot in your color scheme. So at the moment, white is the color of your enemies, right? Using that same color for this massive line here. I'm not sure, not, not quite sure about that. Maybe it pops out a little too much. Maybe we can make this line a little darker color. And then, you know, same goes for those particles, they just look a bit too important for the, for what they actually are. Oh no, now I lost my ball. So far, I've gotta say, honestly, it doesn't really feel all that different from a regular top-down shooter because it's so easy to pick that ball back up again most of the time. And now I get a second ball, but... At this point, I'm wondering what the purpose of the second ball is because... Getting the ball back is so easy. Okay, this is interesting because now these enemies kind of encourage me to attack them from further away, right? Or do they? Yeah, kind of, because if I stand too close to them, they instantly hit me. That is something you should probably look into a lot more because those rabbit enemies, it's obviously the best strategy to kill them from very, very nearby. For these wizards here, it's a little smarter to stay a little further away from them, which makes it a little trickier to get your balls back. So I'd say we need more of that, more enemies where you benefit from ranged combat. One thing with the camera movement is at the moment if I move to the top then I can't really see where I'm going. If I'm moving to the top the player should be in the bottom half of the screen, if I'm moving to the right the player should be in the left hand side of the screen so I can always see where I'm going. That would be great. I have to admit that the feedback is quite juicy. There are not a lot of sound effects in here but the ones that are I like them. Honestly, at the moment, I'm not quite sure if the background texture you have fits to the style of your game. It looks a little out of place compared to all of the other sprites you have. Maybe, you, maybe the background needs to be even more simplistic. Also, I think you have to find a solution for the parts of the level that is out of bounds. Maybe you can make it black or something. I feel like just having the general background texture here looks, looks a little amateur, you know, if you want to turn this into a commercial game, which in your case I know you want to do that, then find a solution for the out-of-bounds areas here. It's definitely fun, you're just not taking full advantage of your core mechanics, which is throwing these balls. Okay, where are we now? Okay, new enemy types, I like it. 
But once again, this enemy mostly encourages me to kill him in close range combat. Uh oh, uh oh, is this a shield dude? Okay, I need to get inside his shield. But then once again, this is a mechanic that encourages me to get close to the enemy, which is once again something I'm doing anyways, because then it's easier to get back my balls. Luckily, I can just rush through here. So what I'm noticing is that this, that you're mostly creating these levels by putting different kinds of enemies into different constellations. Feels like a bunch of mini levels, every room is a little level. And the only way they are different from one another is that they have different enemies inside them. I feel like you need some other ways to change up the gameplay a bit. So for example the boxes you had were a good place to start because that allows you to do some actual level design. I feel like you need more things than just enemies to do level design with. Maybe having a barrier here that you can't shoot through or some mud on the ground that slows down your movement or having some mirrors that can reflect your balls or having a fire. When you shoot a ball through the fire it the ball starts burning and deals more damage. Just more level design elements. At the moment you don't really have anything to do level design with except for enemies. And just enemies alone are not enough to create a lot of interesting gameplay situations I feel like. And I also really feel like you need to make better use of the throwing, ball throwing mechanic. Because at the moment it's so easy to get them back. It really encourages uh, close ranged combat. So the way you could make that more interesting perhaps is having some sort of trade-off using them as a close range weapon perhaps that could make you a bit more vulnerable you know in some shape or form or maybe you should just add a bit more randomness to how the ball spawns around so it's a little trickier to pick them back up best strategy at the moment just seems to be get getting very close to the enemies and then just spamming the fire button as ah, so this guy slowing down the balls i like that that's interesting just the effect looks a little Strange and misleading at the moment. End of level so far, lol. Mm. So what could be the unique selling point of this game? In my opinion, the unique selling point of this game is, are definitely these balls that you have to pick up again. So I would see if you can somehow shift the focus even more to that. Make fighting with these balls even more interesting. And making something like this more interesting is often about finding out what the currently best strategy is and then creating some interesting trade-offs to encourage different player behaviors depending on the situation. At the moment it's really the best strategy to fire enemies or to shoot enemies from very very close by because then you instantly get your balls back and you deal exactly the same amount of damage. I wonder what would happen for example if these balls slowly started speeding up and became faster and faster as they go until they hit something and then depending on fast they are they deal more damage so you're more encouraged to shoot from further away or you could just design a couple of enemies that encourage you to attack them from, from a little further away and then somehow I think it would be cool if it were a little harder to pick those balls back up. One thing you could try for example is making these balls fly through enemies and that means you have to be a little more strategic if you want to get your balls back quickly then you have to go to a position where there's a wall behind the enemy and then you can sort of shoot the balls through the enemy and get your balls back. I feel like that would probably make the game a lot more strategic. I like that idea. These are my thoughts. <laughs> Let's move on. Grazerman by Sky Chen. Mm -hmm. What do we need to do here? And what are these things? Let's see if we can figure out what we need to do. Ah, uh, I have no idea what these things are, but they leave behind these tracks. So I guess we need to somehow get the entire map in that color. And I cannot push them over the the fields that are already brownish. Gonna restart with R, yes, okay, that is very intuitive. Let's see then. Uh, it's quite a simple concept, but it works out quite well. I like it. Okay, that's just a wall. I can't move past, okay. Honestly, I would kind of like it if the levels looked a little more different from one another, especially for the second level. And then also why, why do walls look like this? Why do they have to be these weird white bubbles? I'm not sure I exactly understand the theme of this game. Perhaps they could just be rocks, maybe you can make them grey. Giant big rocks would make a little more sense. Also these look a little too similar to these weird car thingy containers I have here. Oh, actually quite tricky. I think I messed up again. Usually my in my experience it's a very smart idea to make the playing field for puzzle games very very small. That allows the player to see and understand the entire puzzle at once. Okay, I think I did it. Ok, 
Okay, I don't really get this down here because I can't move any of these anyway. So they're basically just decoration down there. I don't think there needs to be this line of trees in every single level. It'd be much more interesting if maybe in some levels there was something else here that you couldn't move past. Okay, are we in the first level again? Okay, I see. Um, I personally would really like it if the first level was a little easier as well, just so you can get the hang of it and get a little, get some success a little faster. And also if all of those levels looked a little more different from one another, I'd really appreciate that as well. By the way, one very intuitive thing you could also have in your game is just blank grass, where everything can move on, but it also can't be eaten. I feel like that would be a very intuitive addition to the game that wouldn't require a lot of explaining and would probably be quite easy to understand. So see, for example, the first level could just look like this instead of this. This way it would feel a little bit less overwhelming and also in general I feel like mixing it up a little bit, making these levels look a little more different from one another is just more interesting because then when you go into the next level it feels less like, oh god, now I have to do the same thing again and it feels more like, oh, this is actually a new and interesting challenge. And yes, I know all of your levels were actually new and interesting challenges, but if they also look more different, then the first impression of them is a lot better and I feel like it's a lot more motivating to play the game that way. Even if it's just a little bit of a visual change, you know, perhaps removing a couple of trees here at the edge sometimes. See, why not, why not even put a little bit of grass there every now and then? I really don't see anything speaking against that, you know. You can, you can move to the edge here anyway, so you might as well use it for level design as well. Other than that, I've gotta say, fantastic game. Once again, a very simple concept, something I haven't seen before. I like that you went for a very small playing field. I hope you make more levels. Let me know when it's done. <laughs> Because this, this is definitely cool. Nice, nice, nice. I want to leave a word or two about how I chose the games for this episode. Because I really got a ton of submissions. It's Tuesday and I already got like 30 emails, 30 games. And then even more on Discord. So that's just more games than I can play. Obviously, look, if you're sending an email like this, the chances are not as high that I'm gonna play it. As game developers, that is something I want to sensibilize you to. Ah yeah, see here somebody just included a screenshot. This is a very smart move. Like if I already see a screenshot in the email, look, this looks interesting. Yes, I know. <laughs> I didn't say include a screenshot. That was not a requirement. And I've also played a couple of games that didn't include a screenshot. I'm also picking a couple of games at random. But I just want to sensibilize you to that because it's the exact same thing when reaching out to YouTubers to press. If your email looks a little more intriguing, if your email looks a little better, then the chance that I'm gonna try it is obviously a lot higher as well. You can see what, what a difference this makes. Like just imagine getting 30 mails or perhaps even 100 mails. You're not gonna download every single game and see how it looks. Like having a screenshot is a big advantage, especially having a good looking screenshot is even an even bigger advantage. Okay, let's try it out, all right? The music is nice. I'm not sure if I can show it to you. This is where I spawn. Here we have some environmental storytelling. I spawned right in front of that boat ship here. Training master said you had to complete training. Okay, so we are here to train. Yeah, that's cool. This is a cool, cool start. Visually speaking, what irritates me the most so far is definitely the UI, both this health bar as well as, as these UI sprites in the bottom left corner. They look a little bit out of place visually speaking and they also, also for the beginning of the game create a bit of clutter that doesn't necessarily need to be there. I'm personally a fan of just hiding that UI stuff when you first start playing and then slowly introducing UI elements as you go. Welcome to blast training. Okay, I wish I could skip through this text with, with a button. Is there any key I can use to confirm? No, I have to click. Okay. Then once again, this UI here obviously doesn't look all that nice yet, but I guess that is still subject to change, right? Okay, the sound effect for that was, was slightly underwhelming, but other than that, quite cool. I like it. The blast training is complete. I see, thank you. These floating trees here are very well designed. I like them. At the bottom there's a night sky and here at the top there's a day daylight sky. In my opinion, the bright sky looks a little better as a, as a background. The skybox is definitely something to think about a little bit though because at the moment, you know, it has some weird 
JPEG artifacts. The skybox usually has such a massive impact on the look of the game because look how much area of the screen it fills usually. It fills, the skybox fills about 50% of the screen at all times. But I think it's definitely worth it to, to get a skybox that fits and supports the stylus well as possible. This one is definitely not terrible. Welcome to Instablock training. Didn't thought that Instablock would literally create blocks. Ring bell? Yes. And then perhaps something you could try as well is perhaps adding a little bit of fog. Platform at the top has exactly the same color as the platform at the bottom. If you had a little bit of fog in here then it would be easier to see what's nearby and what's further away. Just some very very subtle fog, you know. Nothing nothing too crazy. Your insta-block training is complete. Awesome. Training master said you had to complete training. Yeah, I have completed the training. Land at Sky Village. Okay. And my first impression here is once again, I would highly appreciate it if this just looked a bit more different from the first level I've seen. I think it's okay if levels look similar, but especially early in the game, if levels look this similar, it's easy to get the feeling that the game doesn't have a lot more to offer. But I can see some interesting stuff in the back there. There's some sort of weird building. Maybe you could try adding a a tower to that building back there to pique my interest even more. Because the first impression when you enter a level is kind of important, I feel like. Something like that would, would really help to pique, pique my interest and keep me playing. With a couple of very small, simple changes, I feel like the first impression of this level could be a lot more interesting, a lot better. Let's see what this building in the back there is. Oh, three people around town need some help. Okay, so I basically have three tasks in the town here. Three people I need to help. help which feels very gamey, which is okay. I think what the game's lacking so far is a little bit of direction in terms of story. I'm not really working towards anything big, you know, which might be okay this early on. But I also feel like it would probably increase my chance to keep playing if I knew what all of this were about, if there was like an antagonist or some sort of danger, or if I knew a little more about my character here and what he's trying to accomplish. Like, why is he training and all that sort of stuff? Maybe you can, at the very least, Give me a teaser to some of these answers. Can you help me test the combat training ground? Of course. Releasing creature. Okay, I'd prefer to have a little nicer sound for hitting stuff. The feedback for that feels a bit lackluster. Thank you for helping! Okay, that was an easy task. Just had to beat up one monster. Ah, okay, I can run. That is very nice as well. Honestly, for the mayor, he doesn't really have the biggest house. Whatever that at the, in the back here is, looks like the biggest house. Ah, oh, no, okay, it's actually multiple houses. Maybe the mayor should live back here and have a little bit of a tower. I'm not sure. Let's see what these people want. Uh, okay, so this probably is supposed to teach me where my house is. Honestly, I have no idea. Ah, this seems to be my house, okay. Oh, that's cool. A little bit of a perf perspective change, I like. So this taught me that I can go inside houses. Here you go. The animations are quite nice, by the way. I like. Check the path to the houses. So, well done for the tutorial. This really helps me to understand how everything works. Now let's head to the mayor and see if he's happy with what I've done. I also like that uh, it's pretty fast to accomplish these tasks. Like getting all of this tutorial stuff done didn't take me a lot of time. A message came in, you need to talk to the airship pilot. Okay, so is this where the action starts? New orders just came in, okay. You are to recover an expected artifact inside. See, that's a little bit what I mean. So far the storyline feels a bit gamey, like random tasks are appearing out of nowhere just so I have something to do. Are you ready to go? Yes. Nice. See, this is what I'm talking about. If you land somewhere and you see something that already looks radically different from everything you've seen before, it definitely piques your curiosity a lot more. Oh yeah, this, this is awesome. This is epic. Let's head in there. Let's restock. Cool, like this looks nice. I like it. Very, very nice. Are those real-time lights? If so, poor performance. An evil creature. Sweet. Oh, yeah, that works as well. The combat is not exactly the most interesting thing so far, as I... So there's only one attack move. You have to manually dodge backwards by going backwards. <coughs> But definitely well well done on the pacing and on the tutorial, all of that works pretty well. I'm, I'm telling you, you need some destructible objects here. Same for those. I want to destroy them so badly. Oh, this looks like a 
can go up there, but maybe I can't. Here we can see switches and what they're connected to, so this game seems to feature some puzzles as well. Which is probably good, as the combat isn't all that interesting so far. Maybe I can break that, okay, thanks for the hint. Okay, now I disabled one of those walls. How do I get up over there though? Is there anything I can shoot? Is there anything I can... Ah, 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 I remember an ability that I've already forgotten. Uh, maybe you should put an, a reminder for that in here because some people like me are stupid and forget that we can do that. I forgot that I can block, insta-block, especially because I didn't need it in the last tutorial level. Very nice. Actually dig this. Take artifact. Okay, very cool. Very, very cool. Let's see what we can do with that artifact. Oh, different enemy type. Doors locked. Just do hit and run, because I'm scared. Ah, okay. He had the key for the door. I see. Clever, clever. Looks like you have everything. End of the demo. Cool. Very cool. See, I made it all the way through the demo. Played this for quite a while. Cause this game was quite interesting and enjoyable. I just wish it had a, a slightly more compelling story than just there were orders that you pick up this artifact. Like maybe give my character some sort of motivation to actually pick up the artifact. Overall, very well done. Nice, nice, nice. Here we have QB by Chogi Games. That dashing downwards effect here is pretty cool. And I feel like this game probably has quite a bit more to offer, but I've been playing it for a while now and nothing else seems to happen, nothing interesting seems to happen anymore. Okay, now I can finally upgrade stuff. So I would definitely tighten down the, the pacing of that a little bit, make sure the player sees that shop a lot sooner. Oh, now I can open my mystery boxes. What did I win? Okay, seems like that was nothing. Didn't really pay attention. I thought my price would appear here. Increased gravity again. Oh, is that a good thing? Uh, oops. <laughs> Maybe give the player a bit more lean way. You just lose points when you collide with something. Yeah, seems like it. So your life is basically your currency. Uh, one thing that I would critique in this game as well is that it's very hard to see stuff. This is a lot, a lot of focus on the background. Whereas this is exac exactly the other way around. The background stays in the background and the focus is a lot more on the gameplay elements in the foreground. This way it should be a lot easier to see what's going on. I don't know, maybe the fact that you can't see anything is part of the concept, but if it isn't, then I would definitely go for a color scheme that allows you to see what's happening instead of a color scheme that doesn't allow you to see what's happening at all. Definitely has some juicy feedback though. I really like the way you collect those um, collectibles. I would argue that what makes your game interesting and special is the shop. There seem to be a lot of cool and interesting upgrades in there. That's where the game kind of starts branching out. That's where the player can start experimenting with different strategies. You had that cool idea with the mystery boxes that can switch gameplay up a little bit. And that is exactly why I think it should appear a lot sooner. This way players can get to the interesting part a lot sooner. Joggy Games, well, thanks for your submission. I hope you keep making games. Thanks for letting me test it. Here's a game called Snake Man. Let's check it out. Oh, it's a puzzle game. <coughs> Seems like I messed up. Okay, okay, okay. Interesting. See, that's a very simple and unique core mechanic that is slowly but surely expanded on. Now we get some new elements. I'm not quite sure what these things are over here. Oh yeah, they make me shorter. Okay, I didn't get that. Come a little shorter again. Then we can go in here. Yeah, I'm not sure what to say. Honestly, this is... It's a very solid game. Or when I keep going straight forward, the store will slam closed and I will lose. Which means I have to take the way over this switch. And then the levels just become more and more complex. Honestly, this is really good. Look at the colors as well. The color scheme is very nice and clean, has a nice clean art style. It's an interesting mechanic and the levels also take full advantage of that mechanic, which in turn makes this a very nice and co compelling puzzle game. Okay, now we get enemies that move up and down. Yeah, this is very interesting. Nice, nice, nice. Here we have The Ball by Aklum, which is a game made using one of my Unity tutorials. I already gave this a shot yesterday, to be honest, and I've got to say it's 
super creative. This is exactly what I was hoping for when I made my Unity tutorial. Starts out kind of easy and fun. You can smash through these walls here. And then here, for example, a very simple solution for how you can spawn a bunch of seers after a certain amount of time. You just drop them from the sky. <laughs> and then here, see, they're just put on a slight slope. So I have to dodge them all here. Very creative solution. Oof. And I hope nothing else will drop down here or I'll be really angry. Oh, jeez. Oh, so nice, so creative. Just using the tools you have and making the most out of it. Okay, actually, if I remember correctly, this part is quite tricky because there are magma balls on top of those green blocks. Oh, jeez, oh, jeez. Which means... Ah, uh, I bet I don't push them over. Oh, it's just so creative. So creative. Oops! What the hell? <laughs> I haven't played that level yet. What the hell, man? Survive for 30 seconds and then find the exit. Okay. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Where's the exit? <gasps> oh, they all disappeared. Oh, is this the exit? <laughs> oh, this is awesome. Oh, am I racing that ball down there? Oh my god, this is so creative. I can't handle this. I think I found, found a way to cheat a little bit last time. Let's go really fast. Boom. Yeah, you can skip a little section of the level. Oh no! Oh no, now I'm not ahead anymore. Ah. Yeah, let's hope I can do it. Mm. This is so creative. I love this. Oh, nice. I'm I'm really happy to see what you made out of these couple of simple scripts like please, please, please keep making games. You've got what it takes. I can tell this was absolutely fantastic. I already know a lot of you will be a little disappointed that I didn't manage to play their game. I completely understand. I'm super sorry. And you probably want to know, will we do this again? The answer is yes, we will do this again. Please do not send me any more games now, okay? I'll let you know before we do the next video. Uh, might be a couple of weeks from now. One thing you can do if you want to get feedback for your game is to join our Discord group and post your game there. Maybe you'll find a couple of nice people willing to check out your game. And maybe in return you can check out their game as well. That'd be cool. If you want to support what I'm doing on this channel, then there are two things you can do. Of course, hit the subscribe button. And then the second thing is to check out Islanders on Steam. If you haven't already, it's only five bucks. It's a fantastic game. Give it a shot. Thank you very much. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.